we'd like to officially welcome you in to the eighth kingdom. We call it the Meltdown. Welcome in. I am Tim Melton. My cohort here on the Meltdown, that is John Lunsford. John, a very exciting set of trailers that we have not yet seen and are going to react to here live for the very first time as House of the Dragon Season 2 is getting ready to release this summer. What made House of the Dragon Season 1 such a good show? So I said the same thing about something like Breaking Bad to Better Call Saul, that while how, as good as the original was, they learned a lot from that to then make a a better, ultimately better show, I think, with Better Call Saul. And so I say the same thing for Game of Thrones. I see little bits and pieces that when you first start Game of Thrones, you have an improved version of that with House of the Dragon. Now it's one season versus, what, eight? But I think when this is all said and done, I think House of the Dragon could be even better. So I'm very interested to see this trailer to say, hey, how do you take this story? Because it's also a story that has been fully written as well. Rhaenyra versus Alicent. That's what we're all gearing up for in season two. Season one had everybody wanting to see how this battle, it's already personal, but just how bloody it's going to get. And I think season two is going to deliver that. We'll see based on the trailers exactly how it's all going to be shot tonally. I'm very excited about the fact that we have two trailers, John, which is very interesting. There is a black trailer and there's a green trailer representing those two forces that are about to collide. We are going to start with which trailer right now? So we're going to start with the blacks. The whole thing is the blacks and the greens is a, are two factions. I do feel like they didn't explain that quite enough in the first season because it's all about the colors that they wear. And so Rhaenyra's on the, the black side and then Allison's on the green side because that's the colors that they wear for their houses. But to just start straight off and have that right here, I don't know if a lot of people know exactly what that is, but hopefully the trailers will kind of set up. Hey, here's basically Team A, here's Team B. So we're starting with the Targaryen side of things starting here. Starting with the Blacks. Let's go ahead and get our first look at House of the Dragon Season 2 in its official Black trailer form. We fight for our queen! My father chose me, his firstborn child, to succeed him. He held to his decision until death. And yet, Alicent's son sits my throne. I mean to fight this war and win it. The realm will soon tear itself apart. Men do not remember the oath sworn to King Viserys and to his rightful heir. The High Towers are marching. You must crush this beast at its head. Our terms are very simple. Renounce the false king and bend the knee to the king. Or your house burns. When the desire to kill and burn takes hold and reason is forgotten, we will not even remember what began the war in the first place. We fight for our queen! Fear what I've begun. Okay, first initial reaction, and no pun intended here, this trailer is all about the firepower that the Targaryens have. And yes. they fight in a more physical manner, <laughs> a more, we're going to utilize all of our resources, no matter how devastating they're going to be. And what we see, probably from Alicent, and probably from the green trailer, what we're going to probably see, is they're going to fight a little bit more politically. And... That's definitely what's happened so far. These are two fighting styles that I think that's the reason, John, we have these dueling trailers. What do you think about this? Because everything looks really good visually. The dragons have never looked better. They keep getting that technology better each and every time they release some episode of a Game of Thrones show or a spinoff. And I think this thing looks visually captivating. Yeah, from where we were with Game of Thrones, and obviously every day technology advances to make things look even better. Um, you know, I thought the dragons looked good originally, but the thing here is there's more dragons and there's much bigger dragons. So it's not just the, the dragons Daenerys had were 
pretty much the same size. And now I think even with the end of season one, you saw a little bit of variety with the dragons, um, either you know in the sky, in a cave, wherever you saw them, you saw a, more of a variety. And I think you're going to see even more of a variety now. And obviously it's going to come from Rhaenyra's side and with Damon and all the people on her side fighting for the Blacks. And when dragons are lost, it is a big, it's as big as any character being killed in a show, if not bigger, probably bigger. That, that argument could be made. Let's go to Tyler, who got a chance to see this trailer as well. Tyler, what do you think about the visual style of House of the Dragon just based on the black trailer? Oh, it looks absolutely stunning. And you guys are right. The dragons have never looked better. It Whether they are improving the actual models for the dragons or how the light hits them and then the, how that's rendered, Everything just keeps getting better with every release. I hear they feed them with a very special brand of food that keeps them active and looking young and ready to go. All right, that joke didn't work, but here's what may work, and that is the green trailer. This is the first trailer reaction where we've had two trailers yeah. to the same subject matter, but from a different perspective, I would think. Let's check this out and see how much it differs. Only weeks ago, my lord husband was alive, and the realm was at peace. On his deathbed, he knew the realm would never accept a queen. Rhaenyra's supporters will believe what they wish, but Viserys wanted her gone to succeed him. They wish now not for the good of the realm, but for the satisfaction of vengeance. Not against the king, and I will pay it back a hundred times over. I'm as fearsome as any of them. You have no idea the sacrifices that were made to put you on that throne. My uncle is a challenge I welcome. If he dares face me. We will prevail and bring forth peace. But you must accept that the path to victory now is one of violence. Good. To war, then. All my life, I've endeavored to serve both my house and the realm. And somehow none of it matters. Hold to your courage for the one true king, Aegon! First thought, I love the marketing approach of releasing the two separate trailers. I do. I don't think it was necessary from a selling the show sort of way, but I immediately now want to go rewatch the black trailer and then rewatch the green trailer and rewatch the black trailer. So you're a part of the blacks now? No. Yeah? No, no, no. no. I'm no. team green right now. No, team black. I am. And this is what's going to divide us further. And this is why they have these trailers being mm. released the way they do. I love the marketing strategy here, but... Obviously, it's the same show, different perspective. You're seeing both points being made. And what I heard from this was it's now time to ramp up the violence. And a lot of people are going to be pleased that that is re-entering the Game of Thrones universe. The first season of House of the Dragon was also very violent, but it was very plotting of having to establish new characters, new motivations, and when violence occurred, it was a little bit more sporadic than what you expected when you watched the original Game of Thrones there. I am very happy about Sir Otto Hightower coming back into the mix. He is my favorite character from season one, and he is the reason why I'm Team Green, John. But he's also clearly the bad guy in this uh, whole situation. and um, He just has strong opinions. It also has totally played the political game to make this the way it shouldn't be. And we're not going to get into a whole de debate of what we think is going to happen in this, even though the book's already been written. But I think, uh, you know, watching the black trailer, I'm more looking forward to the dragons. I'm more looking forward to the way they approach the story. Because, look, the room that... Uh, Alicent and Otto were sitting in and, and that her uh, Aegon was sitting in and all so many massive decisions in the history of Game of Thrones have happened within that room 
at King's Landing. And there's a lot of really good scenes that have happened within there, not only in the first season, House of the Dragon, but all throughout all of Game of Thrones. So there's plenty of good things there. But when they take it out to the battlefield, that's where you also have some of your most memorable moments. And that seems to be more where the, where the Targaryens are because they got to come from the outside in because they're not on the throne right now. So that's super fascinating to me. I did like the black trailer overall better than the green trailer. Um, I do think you probably could have put them together. And I'm surprised there wasn't – I just went to YouTube because it's like, hey, the trailer release. I went to YouTube and was like, ooh, there's two trailers. The one that was together was like a 40-second teaser of like you need to go watch both of these, you know, minute-and-a-half-long uh, t- trailers. They probably should have put one together, and maybe there is. I just didn't see it right off the bat. I think it's smart. I really it's, do. It's good marketing, but it's like, I just kind of want to see them together because I think you could have mixed the whole thing together a little better. Tyler, what do you think of the strategy here of two trailers in one day? I like it. I like the green trailer better, too. Thank this, you. Good this man. one, uh, You just this, said you like the black one better. <laughs> the black trailer better. Me? Yeah. No, the green trailer. You said you are on the greens. You're like, honestly, I don't think we need to separate it. I like what I saw in the blacks better. That's not, I don't think that's, I think my words are being taken out of context. Mm. Okay. I'm saying I immediately wanted to go back and rewatch the black one and then because rewatch the green one. Because no. Look, John, are we really going to have a House no. of the Dragon moment Tyler, here in this trailer? Tyler, Tyler, your moment. Gosh. Uh, fix it, Tyler. <laughs> I really like the green trailer because um, throughout Game of Thrones, the, uh, the reign of the Mad King Aegon, it gets mentioned all the time, and I've always wanted to see how he comes to power, how he uses that, and you, can, you get a little hint of that when he says... Uh, when you plot against the, uh, if you plot against the king, I'll pay it back a hundred times over, and so that really lines up with what we've heard about Aegon from the original show. And part of what makes Game of Thrones work so well is both in this one and in, in uh, you know, the Game of Thrones series we had before, is you would think the legitimate claim to the throne is the right claim to the throne, but the way things play out, there are multiple legitimate claims to the throne because the whole thing is Daenerys. If he, if he t- went straight off the Mad King, Daenerys is the rightful heir to the throne. Well, then you go off uh, Robert Baratheon. Then it's like, well, then the whole Lannister line, which are you know not, not obviously not his kids, but that that line is the legitimate one to him. So then is it his line or is it supposed to be the Mad Kings? And the same holds true here. Okay, well, Viserys, he said it was supposed to be Rhaenyra. Well, then I got with uh, Allison, and then I had kids there, and then it's, it should be a male, not a female. There's a million things uh, through all this. Uh, the Valerians, too, didn't really pop up. It, they popped up more in the, in the, in the Black trailer. trailer but, yeah. like, that's a whole – and that's a whole storyline. Obviously, we didn't see a lot of that in Game of Thrones, but that's a storyline that's always kind of fascinated me with, hey, we're going to make that alliance there. There's obviously uh, blood ties there as well. Um, you know, Damon married one of his daughters. So there's a, there's a lot of cool storylines with the outside people. Another thing I hate about the Greens, I hate Sir Christian. He is – one of the worst characters in the entire show to me. And of course he's right there fighting, even though he was with Renera for a little bit, the first season did very much set up the characters and set up, Hey, here's why it's an issue. Here's why the, the challenge for the throne is an issue. Now I'm just looking forward to seeing, Hey, let's actually get this done. And then Sir Christian pops up randomly. It's like, can he die like the first episode? I'm fine with him. I'm fine with it being between everybody else. Sir Christian can die first episode. One last thing I want to talk about here, and that is something that we've sort of skipped over. And that is Matt Smith returning as Damon Targaryen. He was really powerful in season one. He's someone that you root for, but also feel like he's despicable. And he fits in this certain gray character realm of motivation. And I just can't wait to see him back on screen because he's captivating in this role. Oh, he is. He's 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 like a Randy Orton type figure in House of the Dragon. Yeah. And he's like, I mean, uh, he's bad at first and then kind of rolls his way into, okay, well, if Renera's like, the person she's like the Daenerys or something going into it that then obviously ends up with her as a whole family thing. But um, that's not new to game of Thrones, but it, it is fascinating to see his storyline. And that's one I almost would have liked to have seen in the first season explored a little more because it was more about the two girls growing up as best friends. Right. Then one ends up becoming her stepmom and it becomes a whole thing. But then Damon's kind of there and they show him in that battle against the, the, crab king or whatever his name was like he really for, was like a crab king, for, yeah. a, for a hot second you see that battle it's like hey i'd like to see more of that how did he get to this point release the crabby patties <laughs> sorry that was not actually in the show no, but it should have been no. No, hey could have hey, been now hey, that i think back that's spongebob game of thrones crossover i mean that's gonna be fire when that happens that's but anyway um no I, he is a character that i'm really looking forward to and it still is very much about uh renera and allison you know and and their ties to viserys and that chain but he's thrown himself in that chain now, obviously being related anyway, that that is a very fascinating character. I'm really excited that they did release these dual trailers. Do I feel like tonally it is as separated as maybe it needs to be and as distinct as it needs to be? 
maybe not, but I really like it, and I can't wait to rewatch these again. What did you think of these dueling trailers, and are you team black or team green? We'd love to hear from you. I think John and I have made our decisions of what we are. So, Even though I have a little green, me and you were in black, but yeah. We'll leave it at that. I think that's what confused you earlier about me. Sure. That you were trying to recruit me by You're waiting for a reason. I get being it. just a strong arm sort of individual. House of the Dragon debuts June sixteenth of this year. We cannot wait. It was on Munce's list of the top five upcoming seasons of television that he's most excited for. How excited are you about it? We'll be covering it right here. Make sure you subscribe to the Meltdown. John, it's all brought to you by our title sponsor. That's my bookie. Yeah, go to mybookie.ag. Hey, March Madness underway. You can go play there and uh, have a little uh, time to fill before you get to House of the Dragon in the summer. Still a lot of sports you can play there. Live casino. Use promo code next round on your first deposit to get a little bonus from us and my bookie. Bet anything, anytime. Anywhere with our friends at mybookie.ag. We'll see you at 2 o'clock Central, 3 o'clock Eastern, live daily right here on The Meltdown.